Okay, we are at Thursday, <clears throat> the last day of April, and um, tomorrow we're doing something different. Instead of reading, at the same time, we'll be meeting on Zoom and having our first lunch together. And uh, I'll be providing pizza to five winners, five fans who entered. And every week, there'll be five pizzas being given away. You can win more than once. Um, the entry forms are on the in all the fan groups. Look for the picture of all the pizzas, and you can sign up. And you can come to the Zoom um, lunch and bring your own. I'm going to bring my own. I'm determined to uh, come out of self-isolation as a thinner version of myself. Hello, Diane and Nancy and Mike and Grace and whoever else has joined us. <clears throat> Today we're doing chapters 17 and 18 uh, from War Mage Unexpected. When this book is up, I may do another Lyra book. We'll have to do another vote or maybe just a Daniel Codex book because I loved that series, even if I'm in the minority. I hope you all are having a great day. Um, it's warm here. It's in the 80s, which is cool for us. It's going to be climbing into the 90s and hanging there for the summer soon. I hear we're even gonna have a 100 degree day already, a couple months early. Um, work, working hard on new books, uh, the Lyric Chronicles in particular, but <clears throat> Goth Drow and War Mage and a few others that are coming along. So um, let's get started on chapter 17. And um, I hope everybody's safe out there and finding a little fun in their day. And I hope you've signed up for the pizza lunch too, if, uh, if you wanna come. The Zoom link will be in the newsletter, um, in a special newsletter tomorrow too. So with instructions. And thank you, Grace. <coughs> Chapter 17. Dust kicked up as Raven walked back to her grandfather's ranch. Her vision was fuzzy and her knee reminded her of her acrobatics with every step. Each step pinged with pain as she tried not to aggravate the dozens of bumps and bruises all over her body. Her, her sore ribs were compounding things, making it difficult to take deep breaths. Another typical day, she muttered. She brushed her hair out of her face, smudging dirt across her forehead and kept moving. I'm not sure I have this fight in me. She looked up at the stars, reaching up her hand and wincing at the soreness as she shut her eyes. I know what it's like to soar on the back of a dragon. You could do this, Raven. Tears came down her cheeks. One more day. I can do this. Oh, I hope I can do this. Raven made it the few miles between the ranches and walked through the Alby Iron Gate and onto the ranch. She was hoping to get to the house as quickly as she could get her body to move. All I want to do is sleep. She perked up when she noticed Mick sitting on a bench outside his cabin, looking up at the sky and scraping mud off his boots. She stumbled over to him, doing her best to smile. Mick, how's the ranch holding up after all that rain, she asked as she approached. The ranch hand took his eyes off the sky and smiled at the girl. Hey, Raven, it's not so bad. At least it stopped for a bit this afternoon. Going to be great for all the harvesting we got to do. Raven sat next to him on the bench. She winced at the strong stench of alcohol that wafted off him. A little early to be digging into the drinking. Stars are just coming out. Mick stifled a burp and lifted his right pant leg to reveal a neat row of stitches sewn into his skin, running up the side of his calf. I caught my pant leg on a harvester this afternoon. Was just moving too quickly, trying to make up for lost time. Did those myself with a little needle and thread. Mama would be proud. <clears throat> that there's a blanket stitch. Keep all the insides where they belong. Son of a... Raven leaned over to inspect it. Must hurt like a mother. Oh yeah, it's good to keep myself medicated, so to speak, and it's working after a fashion. It's got a mighty sting to it. Feels like a thousand splinters, but I bet it would be a lot worse if I didn't have the shine. He took a better look at her. You look a little worse for the wear yourself. What trouble have you been getting into? I tried to take a dragon for a walk. Mick let out a laugh despite the pain, wincing as his shoulders lifted. You are a pistol, Raven, Albie. One for the ages. Ooh, got to keep that leg still. She sighed, lacing her fingers together. Mick, you know if I could, I'd go get you a healing spell right now. And he waved it off, taking in a deep breath and letting it out. No, no, no. Don't worry about that. <coughs> Listen, I know that you would do that for me, and I appreciate it. It'll heal. Save it for when it matters. Got to keep magic on the down low. 
That's what I keep hearing. They're right, too. Magic can make the locals a little nervous. Besides, it ain't the worst I've seen anyhow. Raven frowned. What do you mean? Oh, I remember when we had a young hand here a number of years ago. David or Danny or something with a D. Anyway, he was fooling around with a harvester one afternoon. Sure enough, he lopped off two of his fingers. I remember seeing them fall onto the grass. Ring and pinky. Blood everywhere. He was in a lot of pain and he wanted to get fixed so he could get back to work. It took us hours to find your grandfather and by that time he said he couldn't. Seriously? This didn't sound like her grandpa at all. Yep, but it wasn't because he didn't want to do it or because he was spent. Drew or Donnie or whatever begged him to take him into town to get healed up. He thought maybe there was a wizard there that could do it. Connor said it wouldn't work. That day, I learned that wizards can't just reattach something that's been destroyed and time has passed. It's outside the limits of their powers. He leaned over and patted her on the head, observing how she was moving gingerly and slowly. That looks a little serious, too. You sure you're okay? Yeah, it'll mend. Is my grandfather around? I don't think so. But I've been sitting right here since I got hurt, so I'm probably not the guy to ask. Raven clenched her teeth as she stood back up again, absorbing the pain. Hang in there, Mick. You too, kid. He gave her a longer look, wrinkling his forehead. Next time, use a better leash. Good one. You got me. Boom. She opened her hands, spreading her fingers, trying to smile. Get yourself on in the house before you fall over, Raven. I'm not sure I could drag you the rest of the way, and we'd both feel bad about that. He leaned his head back to stare up at the sky. Raven took a glance up before fixing her eyes on the front door of the house. She walked along a little faster. The porch steps slowed her down, but she gritted her teeth and stepped up. The faster you get inside, the faster you can lie down. Come on, left foot, right foot. She froze, however, when she pulled up the screen door open and saw her grandfather standing in the doorway of the kitchen. Shit. Surprised, he turned around to see who it was. What happened to you? She limped in and let the screen door slam behind her. I don't really want to talk about it right now. Did you get into a fight? Did someone attack? Did something attack you? Grandpa, I'm beat up pretty badly right now. My head is foggy. I just want to rest, please. Connor looked forlornly at his ailing granddaughter. Fine, but we're going to talk at some point. Go lay down. Thank you. She lumbered past him and reached her room, pausing in the doorway to catch her breath. One, two, three. She launched herself at the bed and fell backwards, squeezing her eyes shut against the rolling ache that crept up her back and through her shoulders. The dry crust of leftover mud fell off in clumps all over her bed, but she didn't notice. She was already fast asleep, dreaming of soaring through clouds, her fingers twitching in her sleep. Raven was startled awake by a knocking at the front door. She blinked her eyes awake and slowly rolled out of bed, limping into the front room and opening the front door just wide enough to see if it was one of the hands looking for her grandfather. William was standing on the front porch, pacing slowly back and forth. Hey, William. Did I forget something at the ranch? She looked past him at the inky black sky. What time is it? Still a long time till morning. I couldn't sleep. How are you feeling? He spoke in a low, soft voice. Connor asleep? Raven nodded, opening the front door a little wider to let him in. Fuzzy, like someone stuffed one of your old shirts in my mouth while I was sleeping. He opened the screen door and stepped inside. Don't worry, I can still move my arms. She tried rolling her shoulders and thought better of it. Well, in theory, I can. They walked to the kitchen table and she grabbed two cups of water, filled them, and set them down on the table between them before sitting down. What brings you here? Thanks. He slid over one of the cups. I wanted to check on you, see if you're okay, you know? Not sure I do know. You sure didn't sound that concerned when it happened. William shrugged, giving her an uneasy smile. Look, I knew that was going to happen when you charged into Leander's pen, but that doesn't mean I don't understand how painful it was. I've been tossed around like that a few times. A warning would have been nice. I seem to remember giving you a few of them and you told me to step aside. He patted her arm and drew his hands back when she winced. That bad? She looked up at him with a withering glare. I look like I have the plague. I'm covered in black and blue spots. Quit smiling. Come on, I don't like seeing my friends hurting and I still had work to do. I took time away to get you going with them and it put me behind on some other things. Raven ran her fingers through her hair, gently massaging her scalp and trying to stay awake. I don't really know what I'm doing. He burst out laughing. No shit. She gave him a crooked smile despite her pain. I'm serious. I'm going to talk Fowler into letting me try to bring a goddamn dragon to school. William's eyes widened in surprise. 
you're still thinking of taking a dragon as your familiar, even after today, that's, that's something. And now I told everyone and committed myself, or should be, hardy har. And I'm training a dragon I can't get a saddle on, much less get him to listen. She counted off the list. Leander has to pass his tests or get his wings clipped, and I'm out of familiar and out of school for a year. What test do I have to get him to pass? Breathe, Raven. It's what I've been trying to get you to understand. You don't have to do any of this alone. He slurped his water. First, there's a time trial. It's a special course set up on the far side of the kingdom, outside of the walls. It tests his strength, speed, sense of direction, and his overall abilities. He'll have to clear it in three minutes or less. She pinched the bridge of her nose and closed her eyes. I'm doubling my workload by having to train a dragon. Raven leaned back in her chair. How the hell did I get into this mess? By saying you wanted to be a dragon trainer and you're from a fam famous family of mages. I didn't say it. Mage in training, very clever way of saying it anyway. Take it one thing at a time. I'll be there to coach you the whole way. You have to do the training, but I'll make sure you're doing it right. You just have to listen to me and not be so headstrong all the time. If you have to train a dragon, you have to do it the right way, or you're going to end up like this pretty much every time you get in there with them. She stared at him for a moment, wondering if she should trust him. We are a team. Without saying a word, she stood up and disappeared down the hallway. She emerged with her small backpack, dropping it onto the table. There's something else. What's in there? Raven undid the main pocket and pulled out the small orb. Grandpa gave it to me. She handed it to him. He said that it will tell me if something bad is coming. William took the orb and held it in his right hand, holding it up to eye level. What do you mean by something bad? There's been talk in town of something happening to the town. Basically, if this orb turns from white to red, the shit is about to go down. He peered into the orb. Okay, well, it's white. What's the problem? Is it? Raven took it from his hands and stared into it deeply. I think it's starting to change. Look, right here along the bottom. That's not white anymore. That's pink, isn't it? I mean, maybe, he squinted his eyes. If it's pink, it's barely pink. I don't think that means anything. That ball is white. All is well in the kingdom. He tapped the top of it. If that whole thing turns red, then what? You're supposed to go to war? She opened her mouth to answer, but stopped. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm just supposed to be on watch or on guard, or if I'm supposed to, you know, fight. I don't even know what would be coming at us. That makes it hard to fight. She put the orb down and pressed her hand against her sore back. Then again, after today, I'm not as sure of my fighting skills either. You see what I mean? Problem number two, and you were trying to fight a dragon. You want to train a dragon. William got up from the table. I think you're seeing things. I have to get back to the ranch and get some sleep. When you're ready to try training Leander again, let me know, and I'll make time to help you out. Otherwise, rest up and heal, okay? He shook his head. I have a feeling I'm talking to myself. At least wait for everything to dry out first. He kissed the top of her head and slipped out the door, quickly disappearing into the darkness. Raven quietly shut the door behind him and went to look at the orb again. That's pink at the bottom. I know it is. The fog in her head started to clear, and she slapped the top of the table with both hands. She slipped, down the, she slipped the orb back into her backpack and carried it back down the hallway, running her hand along the wall to steady herself. The door to her grandfather's room opened, and he peered out, concerned. Was that William's voice? Has something happened? I insisted on trying to saddle a new dragon. Don't worry. William was there the whole time. Turns out you can fly without a dragon. It was only a few feet, and I kept eating dirt on my landings, but it was a kind of flying. Connor listened to her with a smirk. Sounds like you've had an eventful night. Now what? I'm going to rest up so I can be at my classes in the morning. Please be careful, granddaughter. We just healed your shoulder from an arrow wound. You're not indestructible. It's just a bunch of bruises. William seems to think it's normal. William has a unique idea of normal. Okay, okay, you can keep going. I know how important it is to you. What do you have there? Raven was pulling out the orb and showed it to him in the dim light. Do you see it? That's a little pink right there, she said, running her fingernail along the bottom. If that orb is starting to turn, then I need to be ready. I can't be missing time lounging around here, even if I'm beat up. I'm going back to that dragon ranch. I'm going to get that red dragon to listen to me. You two are a match set in a few ways. Is he supposed to become your familiar? Raven looked sheepish, lacing her fingers together. That was the original thought. 
What have I done? He smiled, concern in his eyes, as he took a closer look at the orb. You're a spitfire, just like your father was. I have no doubt in my mind that you're going to get that dragon under control. She cocked an eyebrow. Being a spitfire runs in the family, huh? You bet. How about dragon riding? Does that run in the family, too? The smile eased from Connor's face. Imagination runs in the family, too. And you're spending way too much time talking to this old man. Go rest. I'm going back to sleep. The sun will rise before we know it. Raven pointed to her ribs. Can you heal these? It really hurts. Connor sniffed and shook his head. Not yet, and you're fine. It's part of the price of training dragons. It'll help you remember not to repeat your mistakes. Don't worry. Time will take care of it. So we're on to chapter 18. Hi, Kathleen. I'm glad you're here. Hi, Mike. And you found us. And Lois is asleep behind me, but she's here and quiet. Um, I downloaded some dog training videos from Doggy Dan of Australia. And fingers crossed, so far, they're working like a charm. So there's far less sudden barking at the window. But we'll see. It's only day two. Um, I hope you all are coming tomorrow. Uh, instead of reading at 1 p.m., I'll be right here, but it'll be lunch. And um, five fans will win pizzas. Five fans every Friday will win pizzas. So the entry forms are in the uh, fan groups. So make sure you go over there and sign up. But you can just show up for the Zoom meeting at a lunch um, and bring your lunch. I'm going to bring mine. So either way, I hope I see everybody there. Okay, chapter 18. The sun was barely up before Raven had finished her chores and walked to the Albi Ranch gate with her satchel strapped across her chest. Henry was waiting for her, leaning on the fence, his mouth hanging open. What the hell happened to you? She walked past him, forcing him to jog to catch up to her. Let's just say my familiar wasn't too cooperative yet. He ended up giving me a few flight lessons without him. He whistled. That's some bad news, Raven. Are you going to be okay? I don't have a choice. I just have to get through classes and get back to the Moss Ranch to work with the dragon some more. She glanced over at Henry's shoulder. Where's your toe? He patted the brown leather strap on his shoulder. Safely in the bag. I'm not chasing after him through town anymore. Can he breathe in there? I made him a hidey hole. He's even got a few large crickets for a snack. Is that the screeching sound I hear? Sounds like a small battle in your backpack. Call the wild. Did you do the herbal potions homework? I couldn't get the right fever view leaf to ginger ratio. There's still a glowing block glob of something on the wall of my room. What did Professor Finch say? It's three parts to one with a sprinkle of dandelion. Only the petals. He slapped his forehead. That's what I did. I used Queen Anne's lace. Those weeds really confuse me. Leave something for the fairies when you're in the woods and they'll help you. A few walnuts or some dried berries always works well. Professor, Professor Finch scares me. Those little round spectacles and the way he looks right through you. You think that's an actual spell you can see inside of somebody? All the professors scare you and they can see what you're up to at a glance without a spell. Raven shifted the bag on her shoulder, letting it all out. Oof. Are you sure you're going to make the whole walk? Let me carry your bag. You don't have to. He cut her off, holding up his hand. I'm your best friend. It's what we do. You do it for me, right? Raven eased her bag off her shoulder, glad to have the weight gone, and handed it over. Thank you, she said, smiling. Let's go through the different herbal combinations. We have some time. They recited them together like a song, getting closer to the edge of town. Merchants were setting up their wares for the day. Mrs. Whitaker called out to Raven. I saved you two rolls. You have time now? Raven gratefully took them, handing one to Henry. Thank you. The day is already better. I'll say, said Henry, biting the roll in two. That's a very big boy. I'll get you another. Raven looked around and noticed the empty stoop. The baker came back with two hot rolls, raising raisins dotting the top. Tell your grandfather hello from me. His goat's milk is the best, Raven nodded. Where's the old veteran who's always near your shop? The baker looked to the right and to the left, scratching his head, scratching her head. That's odd. He's always here when I open. He likes to get his roll hot too. I like to take care of any of the veterans, she said with a smile. His name's Peter, right? Let me think. That sounds about right. Never did get a last name. Do you know the Smithies? No, can't say as I do. Friends of yours? Raven shook her head. No, sorry to have bothered you. He must have been confused. Mrs. Whitaker smiled, waving as she went back inside. 
Raven took a short trot around the square, ignoring her aches, but couldn't find any sign of the old wizard. Are you worried about the old guy? He looks like he can take care of himself. Henry licked his fingers, a satisfied grin on his face. Good, good. They started walking again, passing through the town. Yeah, I'm sure you're right. Maybe the rain drove him in somewhere. Looks like everybody's catching up after being inside all day yesterday. Several shopkeepers were busy sweeping the front of their stores or wiping down windows. They finally got to the square and Raven pointed to the bulletin board getting closer to it. Check out the board. Those papers are soaked. Henry nodded as he approached the board, extending his finger to push the thin, mushy wad of papers. A sludgy chunk of the papers fell away, wrapping around his left boot. Son of a bug farmer. He stepped backward, trying to shake it off. Raven looked solemnly at what was left on the board. Where could all these people be? He gingerly peeled off the last of the slimy papers. My dad says it doesn't matter. Whoever these people are, are they're long gone. How can he say that? According to him, nobody has ever been found from these missing persons reports. It's just some formality thing. Makes people feel like something is getting done. Raven scowled. That makes no sense, she muttered. Dad says most of the people have moved on to other parts of the kingdom, and lots of them don't want to be found. Has anyone tried the back tables at the Wrangler? Good one and not a bad idea. You still worried about Isaac? No one's heard from him? No, not a word. I checked the bunkhouse this morning. He must have gotten a better offer from someone. Job, girlfriend. He looked at his friend, patting her on the back. That's not your biggest worry, you know, right? Time is passing and you're still stuck on a stubborn dragon for a familiar. It's the only animal that's calling to me. Then you better get him to holler back or I'll be walking to school alone. Come on, you better move along. Those rolls gave you a boost of energy. Food is fuel, Raven. I know, Maxwell, we're almost there. Henry gently patted his bag as he picked up the pace. They passed by the other shops, Mr. Jones shoveling mud out of his workspace as they stepped around leftover puddles. The pennants that flew on the top of the school turrets drew closer and they picked up the pace past the woods, over the small bridge and the few houses, finally coming to the tall gates. Students were spilling out of the main hall and splitting into every direction. We're not late, are we? Raven looked at the shadows falling across the grass, estimating the time. Murphy, she waved to her friend, picking up her pace. Hey, there you are. No assembly this morning. We're, going, we're to go straight to class. I can't wait. I love weapons class. You love watching the professor of weapons class, said Henry. Raven nudged him in the ribs. Oof, don't poke my buns. He grinned, his dimple showing, and handed her the book bag. I have magical history first thing. I have to hustle up to the second floor. Fingers crossed, I stay awake. That's too low a profile. He laughed and pointed at Raven as he turned and took off at a run. Come on, said Murphy, hooking arms with Raven. They walked around the long side building and back near the barns. They saw their weapons professor, August Fellow, standing in front of their class with a long bow in his hand and a quiver on his back. Straw targets were set up on metal stands 20 yards away. The best, whispered Murphy, smiling and waving to the professor. He nodded and pointed with the bow to the group. Line up, everyone. Murphy let out a loud sigh and pulled Raven along. He's way too old for you. Not for looking. The professor was a lean, muscular wizard with long, dark hair crowding his shoulders. He was always dressed in a tunic and hunting pants with tall boots and a weapon was never far away. Neither were some of the senior girls who found excuses to hang around him and ask endless questions till he inevitably shooed them away. He was one of only two professors who were hard pressed to be found in the standard uniform of a black linen robe. The other was Professor Ridley, who always preferred something more dramatic. Welcome everyone to your first defensive demonstration. Not only is it important to know how to use a weapon, it's vital to know how to defend against them. Now, I need a volunteer. Bella Chase eagerly raised her hand, waving it around. Murphy was not far behind her, along with a few other girls. Raven did her best not to roll her eyes. Bella, perfect. Bella, perfect. Bella eagerly came and stood next to him, beaming at the rest of the class. Murphy fumed, crossing her arms over her chest. Bella, I want you to take this bow and arrow, step over there, and fire it straight at my head. The girl bristled at the suggestion. No, no, she said, shaking her head. I couldn't do that. I'll kill you. Bella nudged her, fellows nudged her to start walking. You need to trust your magic. I trust mine. Now go over there and get ready to shoot me. The class murmured loudly. You think that's a good idea? Bella, do you even know how to shoot an arrow? What if she wings you? Try it on someone else. How about Roger? He's got a thick hide. His mom says it all the time. 
Professor Fellows smiled and stood up straighter, pointing to his forehead. Look right here when you aim. Okay. Bella shouted with more than a little uncertainty in her voice. She swallowed hard and lifted the bow, drawing back the string with the arrow cocked. Fellows nodded confidently. Class, I want you to see the power of the spell in action. Protegus me. The professor waved his hand around and a bright green light flashed in front of his frame, glowing steadily. Okay, Bella, shoot. Bella's hands trembled as she pulled back even harder, staring straight at her target. She unleashed an arrow that rocketed to her teacher within seconds. It struck the green glow and snapped in half before hitting the ground. Mouths hung open for a moment, broken by a sudden burst of loud applause. The professor smiled, walking back to the students. There are several different spells that can do this in your textbook and are safe to practice at home. This one is my favorite because it's effective without using too much of your energy. At all times, you need to manage your energy. Each of you will try out this spell today. Better get in line, Raven thought. Don't let Bella show you up. Murphy beat her to it. She was first in line to get up in front of everyone and try out the spell. She shouted, Protagus, me, and small potatoes appeared out of nowhere surrounding her boots. Isn't it amazing how much difference one letter makes? Professor, Professor Fellow scooped up a potato, but might make for some hearty soup. He tossed a potato to Murphy. No one shoot at anyone today. We just practiced the spell. I don't want to explain any human pin cushions. He winked at Murphy, whose face reddened. Murphy scooped up the potatoes and found her way over to Raven. Well, that was a new one. She giggled in disbelief. Did you seriously just take the potatoes with you? Why not? They're mine. Besides, money's always a little tight at our place. It's not stealing. I made them. The two of them stood there waiting for Raven's turn. Murphy set all the potatoes down except one small one. Holding it in her hand, she said, Coquus. The potato was soon sizzling. She took a careful nibble, rolling the bite around in her mouth. Hot, hot, hot. Geez, really? Raven cocked an eyebrow. I missed breakfast this morning, and my turn is done. Did you bring enough to share with everybody? Fellows asked, passing by them. Murphy gulped. No, sir, I just didn't want them to go to waste. A little more focus to the task at hand. We've been at peace for a generation, but that may not always last. He kept walking among the students. Who's next? Raven raised her hand and stepped forward, settling herself and shaking out her hands. Raven, you don't appear to be in the best of shape. Professor Fellows looked at her skeptically, but Raven wooed, waved off the concern. I'm fine, sir, just a little banged up. I can still go. Raven began to utter the words just as an arrow whizzed past her ear. She stumbled and fell to the ground, startled and off balance. Professor Ridley turned and shouted, Bella Chase, what are you doing? I didn't hit her. I would never do that, Bella insisted. I just wanted to scare her a little bit. I'll get you back for that one, Bella, thought Raven. I'm fine, said Raven, brushing off the front of her pants. Go ahead, Bella, fire away, she shouted. The professor raised his hand to stop Bella just as Raven spun up the shield. Bella released another arrow, this time aiming straight between Raven's eyes. A look of horror passed across the professor's face and he shouted, Prohibere! but the arrow was already bouncing off the shield and splintering into pieces. Raven smiled, feeling her shoulders drop as she let out the breath she was holding. This could come in handy. Just as Bella turned away, Raven fired an arrow in her direction, just far enough to the left to miss her. But Bella had already spun up a shield faster than anyone else in class. But this time the shield spun up around the arrow and circling it. The shield snapped the arrow in half with the head of the arrow on one side of the shield and the tail of the arrow on the other side. Wow, this girl is good. Enough. You two, come with me. The professor looked grim, marching ahead of them and not even wanting to see if they would follow. Bella went, Bella went and fell in place next to Raven, walking beside her. They followed behind their angry professor. We will meet again, whispered Bella, careful not to be overheard. Sounds like a threat, said Raven. She glanced up at the back of Professor Fellows, taking them around to the side steps of the far building. Not really. Not if you're as good as you think you are. You do seem to have real potential, but we shall see. There's a lot of competition at this school and I plan to be at the top. Raven scoffed at the notion. Excuse me, real potential? I could conjure circles around you. Bella shrugged confidently. Prove it. But she immediately raised a finger and shook her head. Actually, never mind. We can't do that. Why not? You need to have a familiar. You don't have one, so. Raven blurted out, yes I do. His name is Leander, and he's a young dragon the color of fire. 
Oh, you really do have a dragon. That's great. She looked behind them and looked back, a cold smile on her face. But I don't see him anywhere. Why isn't he here learning alongside you? Even your friend has her barn cat. They ducked inside the building and went down the hall following the professor. I'm working on it, believe me. And when I get this dragon here, you'll be amazed at what he can do. They started up the long stairs, trudging toward the headmaster's office in the tallest turret. Bella looked at her, tilting her chin down and frowning. Weren't you told we can't have dragons? Unless you find something soon, mage, you're done at this school. Might as well not waste your time. Like hell, we'll face off again, just you and me. Once I get my dragon, my familiar here, you'll see what I can do. I've already gotten to the necessary approvals. She blushed at the lie, hoping Bella wouldn't notice. Bella smiled. I'm counting the days, she purred. Magic awaits. They got to the headmaster's office as anger burned inside Raven. I need to get that dragon under control and quickly. Ladies, what's this I hear about shooting arrows at each other? Headmaster Flynn's booming voice echoed from inside his office. One problem with magic, said Bella, is that word travels way too fast. Quit your shaking, we'll be fine, and I will best you, Raven Albee, mage in training. Raven curled her hand into a fist. Don't write the ending too early, Bella. Ladies, the two girls startled and made their way inside the office, passing under the steady glare of Professor Fellows. There's always two, every year. I'll be watching you two, my project for this semester. And that is 17 and 18. And Monday we'll do 19 and 20. Uh, because tomorrow we will be doing pizza and lunch together and on Zoom. And the link, um, we will post the link all over social media today and tomorrow, and it will be in the newsletter um, tomorrow. So if you're in on my newsletter email list, you'll get it in the newsletter with instructions. Otherwise, you'll see it all over social media. I hope I see you here at 1 p.m. tomorrow. And we'll let the five people uh, who win pizza this week know tomorrow. We'll order them in the morning. So if you haven't signed up, there's still time. And um, I hope you all are having a great day. Keep writing to me. Um, Mike Mitchell can tell you I do write you back. And um, send me pictures of the view from your house. I love those. And um, I will continue dog training here and writing. And I hope you all have a good day. I love you all very much. And I'll see you tomorrow on Zoom.